Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to Redemption and Restoration Fellowship Church under the leadership of Pastor Alvin R. Bradford. We are so glad that you're joining in with us today. We at R&R &R are about redeeming, restoring, and saving souls. Also, today is another day, a great day for us to worship the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we enter into God's presence, let's just leave all our baggage behind. Let us enjoy today's blessing. Thanks again for joining in with us. We love you and God bless you. Amen. 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 We thank you for Amen. that. Amen. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. We are so grateful for another day. Such sunshine, Lord. Such opportunity. Another chance to come before your face, Lord. And we thank you that you have turned your face towards us, Lord, with um, so much glory and so much honor. That's how we bow to you because we know that you have all power and you have all dominion and you know everything. So we're just asking you, Lord, that as, as you know what's on our hearts regarding all the people on the prayer list, Lord, even the prayer warriors, Lord, and their families and all the issues, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, that as we come to you, that you know all the names and as we do address them on Thursday, Lord, and their specifics. But you now, Lord, have all of that information and you had it before we even had it. So we just ask you, Lord, to accept our thanks for being able to be intercessors for them, Lord. And we will keep praying. We will keep on, Lord. And we know you don't get tired of us. So we say thank you. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. And we thank you for all your many blessings. And we just thank you, Lord, for this time and for the opportunity to praise and study your word again, Lord. And we just ask you, Lord, to continue to touch this list, touch the prayer warriors and all that they are doing and uh, are trying to endeavor to do regarding the ministry and their personal lives, their own health and their families and just everybody, Lord. And these things we pray, we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ, Lord, and we're praying for the lost. We don't know all the names, but there's a lot of people that are wanting to be saved. They wish they knew solutions. And Lord, it is up to us. And we ask you to use us to direct us towards them and help us to keep our vessels clean so that you can use us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, your resurrection power, we do claim in the name of Jesus. Amen. If there is nothing else, let's bow our heads in prayers 324, 325. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I am extremely grateful to you for all the things that you have done for me, my wife, my family, uh, my jobs, everything I'm involved with. Extremely thankful, Lord, for the fellowship that I have with Redemption and Restoration Fellowship Church, for those that you have blessed to be in my circle where I can enjoy their time, their love, their support. I am grateful, even though, Lord, we thank you for those that even support us that do not have the opportunity to even be online with us at times. I'm grateful for your love, your patience, and your kindness. Continue, I pray, Father, to give myself the messages that I can bring to your people, that they will open up their hearts, souls, and their minds to receive, to lo learn more of your word than most do learn uh, just sitting and listening to someone preaching and teaching. So continue, Lord, to take us to the depth that will give you uh, joy of knowing that we're able to search out your word in a greater form that will be useful in our life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, just briefly here, uh, when we started uh, about three sessions ago and we were talking about the scriptures, we, uh, we went through that. We talked about how uh, the Bible was uh, format, formatted where scriptures uh, were, were not the original. The scripture did not have chapters and verses in the original Bible, but they did come about around in the 1400s. Uh, so when we read, we have to be careful. We established that understanding that there are the Bibles that are out there that's not equally translated with the intent of giving God's true understanding of his word. So we be careful about that and why I also use the Matthew, uh, 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 the uh, King James version, which you always see on my screen at one time or another, because that's the one I choose to stick with. 
We also went through uh, Matthew the 23rd, and we were talking about the 37th verse. We went through um, uh, what the scholars believed in the possibilities and the dates around the time of uh, the, the scriptures being written in Matthew uh, 23 and 24. Uh, we talked about the first temple, the second temple, the third temple, the fourth temple, and the fifth temple. Temple, and I don't know why I got the fifth temple here before I had the fourth temple, but um, on my my lesson here. But we need to know those in timelines and understand because when you understand the temple over in Jerusalem and its purpose, it also gives you a gauge of where we are in time when it comes to how close we are to Christ has returned to us to take us up out of here, known as the rapture, before the tribulation period starts. Uh, we also looked at this about the, the word usage. Uh, when we read that we have to be careful using the word who, what, when, where, why, and how. When we study the Bible to, in order to get a clearer understanding of what God's word is saying. In symbolism in the Bible, especially in Revelations, and we use the, ex the uh, example of the building. When you see when it speaks of the building, usually it's speaking of the building in Jerusalem. But are we speaking of the building in reality? Are we speaking of the building in symbolically? Or are we speaking of the bu building spiritually? We are the church, the God's chosen people called out, the believers who've been baptized in Jesus' name. We are the building. That's why he says your bodies is the temple of God. So when we read that, we have to know when we talk about symbolism in the Bible, and especially when we get into revelations, understanding the building is when, where, why, and how. So those are things that we studied in the bat in the past. We also went over into um, Matthew the twenty-four chapter when we speak of that, and we discuss the values um, uh, of when we were talking about the temple of understanding the temple, the value of the temple, the significance of the temple. When we talk about Mount Moriah, Mount Moriah, the uh, sacrifice did not take place on Mount Zion, but at, in the vicinity around it, we talked about the sacred trees of the goddess uh, uh, Athena and Athens. When we talk about that in Greek mythology, mythology and the value of the olive, tree itself. Uh, they, we talked about the Jewish cemeteries that was uh, over there uh, on the, the mountainside where there's 3,000, uh, for 3,000 years, we have been looking at and reading about um, the Jerusalem, Jerusalem temple. Also now it is a burial ground where they have an estimated of 150,000 graves and why they are there and why people think it's important to be there. So we've covered a lot, but we still got a long ways to go. So I wanna look at who is John the, Revel the Revelator. And this is what we will be talking about today. So in the next coming weeks, we got the revelations of Jesus Christ to John. We have the seven churches of Asia which I also want to talk during that time about the seven dispensations of the Bible, which means that each church is represented of 1,000 years. Uh, this was going to be an exciting part also in reading because it will make sense when we are in uh, Revelations. We will talk about the seven churches of Asia, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, a beast with seven heads and ten horns, the seven thunders in Revelations, the seven bowls. Now, there was something else that I see I left out of there. I'm going to have to interject. It's going to be in there. And it's talking about the two witnesses in uh, during the tribulation time. I want us to review that. If there's something else that you want specifically brought out during this study, please feel free to bring it to my attention. We're not going to rush it. We talked about this being done in about 12 weeks. It'll actually be about 12 studies, which would be about six weeks. But uh, please stay with me. Now, I've also been told to slow down. Okay. Uh, I've given too much information out, so I'm going to do my best to slow down. And feel free to just stop me if you want to. Uh, don't send me a little text or, or and the notes up there in the section, as some people do, because when my mind is on my presentation, 
I am not looking at those those things up above. My wife or somebody can see those texts. They can let me know if be if somebody has something they want to say. Uh, I want to make sure that you also uh, hear and document everything that is said. So if I'm moving too fast, just say slow down. If you got a question, let's do so. Now, somebody talk, tell me about this John of Patmos. If you'd like to have about 10 seconds, 30 seconds to give me a response about John, well, who we call the revelator. Some call John the, the divine. Some call John the theologian. Some say the John on Patmos. Uh, so anybody has some information they want to throw at me right now about this John? Before we uh, move on, I don't want to ask questions through this because I don't want to go so fast, I leave you behind. Open up those mics and talk to me. I don't want to have to call names, so it's best to always just do it freely. Uh, early tradition says that John was banished to Patmos by the Roman authority. This tradition is credible because banishment was a common punishment used during the imperial period for a number of offenses. So they put him out there thinking that he would just die. I think we talked about this yeah. a couple of weeks ago. The book of Revelation mm -hmm. was written sometime around 96 CE. The CE we're used to using AD, uh, they are trying to change this up on us and the CE means Christ era. So if you see that, you understand uh, what it was that uh, that term is used for. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to keep looking. Did you have another uh, question, uh, Sister Wright? Okay. Let's see what it says here. Age 93. Yes, he died in uh, 100 AD at the age of 93. 93. Are you able to see my screen, Sister Wright? Yes, sir, I am. Good. Okay. So these are also ways when we're studying, because this is another reason I want to do it like that and people see my screen, that you can see how easy it is to run a search uh, online and find the information you're looking for. Because the, the Internet is good, but you got to watch out what you're reading in, in, in the, uh, on the Internet as well. So we know that he was how old? He was 93. 93. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about John? Okay. So we know that this the article was written because John would have left notes, but it, a lot of times the written scripture is not done by the one who actually uh, wrote these down by the time they were written and published by, was by somebody else. Okay, um, the book of Revelation was written around eight, uh, 96 eight, uh, CE in Asia Minor. The author was probably a Christian from Ephesus known as John the Elder. So he's had several names. Uh, John was on Isle of Pappas, not far from the coast of Asia Minor. So it gives you geographically the area uh, where John was. Uh, the author of of the book of Revelation that identifies himself only as John. Traditionally, this was often believed to be the same person as John the Apostle, John, son of Zebedee, one of the apostles of Jesus, to whom the gospel of John was also attributed. Now, we have to be careful because when we study, there are different scholars who claim to have different information. So you may hear something else different by another writer. Uh, what is the one key part of what I've always said in our, our studies and our messages uh, that you got to have to understand the scriptures? What is that? You got to have the Holy Ghost to help you in your studies. The Holy Spirit. That's correct. You got to have the Holy Spirit in that to, to understand some of the things that's even said in the word. Remember, Jesus said to his says, I must depart so that the comforter that can come unto you and he will lead you in in all truth that comforter is the holy spirit the holy ghost we know this is in revelations 1 uh, 9 it says i john who also am 
am your brother and companion in tribulation and to the kingdom and the pace patience of Jesus Christ was in is the owl that is called Baptist for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. The amazing part that we talked about a couple of weeks ago was that John was put out there to die, but John was put out there where God could have total peace and separation from all the other people so that God could talk to John. And that's why I even say to you, don't, don't be discouraged sometimes when it seems like you're alone. Don't look at the loneliness. Look at the time where God can speak into your spirit. Uh, and I'm still finding that the more I donate my time and my life to Christ to understand his word, to study his word, more God shows me more and more and more and more. Even as he did yesterday when I was studying for the ark, uh, um, knowing the ark, when I discovered a passage that took me back to Adam and Eve. When, uh, when God said the same thing to Noah as he did to Adam and Eve when he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Uh, that was an interesting uh, part there. And this morning, I'd like to tell you, Sister Karen, thank you once again. I believe everybody received that this morning in my uh, uh, sermon out there. Um, and also people continue to ask me to put these things on CDs which I will instead of just on the internet because everybody, uh, especially old school, does not use uh, a lot of the internet. I use that word old school because uh, that's what people uh, are calling me, old school. All right, I know I'm getting old. So, but I, I questioned the guy one time when the guy called me OG. I said, why you call me OG? He looked at me, he says, man, that's great privilege and honor. Really, okay. In their minds, that's how they think and how they want to do it. Long as it covers respect and honor, I'll take it. Call me OG. Just remind me I'm getting older. I, I keep remembering that too. But I think I, God that he allowed me to get older because now that I've gotten older, God has been able to use me and speak to me and show me stuff I never saw before. I never saw. I've been in the Bible a long time and so many things I have I have not seen before. So. John, out on the Isle of Patmos, even if you're on your Isle of Patmos, let the Lord use you. He said in uh, Revelations 1.10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. I want you to know that there were more than seven churches in Asia. Let's get that in your thought. There were more than seven churches. So the emphasis just on the word church and building is not what this study is about. Because when God spoke to his people, he did not speak into people about a building. He was speaking about the church ecclesia, which is the body of baptized believers in Christ. Those who have received Christ uh, dying upon the cross, that they have been washed in the blood of Christ. This is who he's speaking to. So when God speaks of the church, he's not speaking to a people in a building. This instance is when he spoke to the church the churches that he was referring to was the group of people in that city that assembled themselves together in houses to come together to study God's word and what he was saying about to each one of them was what it was specifically of the characteristics of those seven churches well those seven churches also were the seven dispensations of the Bible throughout the Old Testament all the way through through the the, uh, the the end book in the book of old the New Testament revelations all the way through actually those seven churches God spoke to and all seven churches was the dispensation of the Bible meaning the different means and attitudes during various times in church history throughout the Bible, how the church acted and how they function, their attitudes, you will find that. How that come together was in the seven churches was based also upon the seven days that it took in the creation in Genesis for the, uh, uh, the creation of man. 
Those seven days, why was that? Because the first day, the Bible says, a day is as a thousand years to Christ. So each day, day one was a thousand years. Day two was a thousand years. Day three was a thousand years. But those thousand years were representation of the history all the way through the Bible. So when we look at the Bible as a whole, there are people who say we're no longer living in the Old Testament. That's true. But the Old Testament is not insignificant. There are people who say they don't need to study the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation is significant, insignificant. If that's the case, then the Bible would be insignificant because the book of Revelation is a recap all the way through history in Revelations. If you do not respect Revelations, you you're cannot. You're cut. Excuse me. Uh -huh. Yes. The Go ahead. Shalane. Oh, you were cutting out. Okay. Some of your words were cutting out. Okay. Did Can you I go just back start? and repeat what you just said? Sure. Where, where, where is it you did not hear? Um, at the very beginning, when um, you were talking, your words were cutting in and out. From the very beginning, you know how far back that was. Not just what you just said. <laughs> not the whole. Not the whole service. Okay. So when we talk about the dispensation, well, I don't know. The dispensation of the churches. Did you understand? Did you hear me clearly when I was in uh, in the Garden of Eden during the creation? Okay, doing when we look at the seven churches, the seven churches in Asia also represents the seven dispensations of history of the church through the Bible. So when we look at it from the Garden of Eden, we're also speaking of the seven days. The seven days. Uh, a creation is representative of each day as a thousand years. The first day is a thousand years. The second day, a thousand years. The third day as a thousand years. All the way through those seven different days, seven dispensations, seven different churches is seven different attitudes, uh, dispensations in the Bible uh, of the church itself and how they thought, how they lived all the way through history. So if people who think that the Old Testament is not relevant, then you will not be able to understand the whole Bible because the whole Bible is a makeup of the Old Testament, which works its way through to Revelations. If there are some people who think that the book of Revelation is insignificant, then you are not uh, accepting the entire Bible because the book of Revelation is a recap all the way through from the Old Testament through the New Testament. So when we end Revelation, if you do not understand the prophecy uh, of the Old Testament, you will not understand the makeup of Revelations. And you'll see that as we go. God blessed us with men who God spoke to, the seven, uh, the five major prophets spoke through God of things far into the future. The 12 minor prophets that were spoken to on God in near future history, things that was yet to come. So when we look at the Bible as a whole, there is no way to separate any part of the Bible to understand the value of what God is saying to us. Now, some people may be satisfied. I'm saved. That's all they need to know. Okay, that's good. I'm glad you're saved. But my question is, how can you be saved and I have a zeal to learn everything God has for you? There is more to just being saved. You being saved, you live a life that God will reward you. You will receive rewards in heaven because of your works on earth. You will receive crowns in heaven because of your works on earth. So God did not put us here to just be a little flower that's growing up in the ground or a little tree standing in the place. God put us here for a purpose to spread his word. As you read in the Bible, we are not just a people, although we are in his family. He called us ambassadors, which means that we go out 
and represent him as who he is. That is how we are to be in this body so that the people can see Christ through us. Now, how many people really reflect Christ in their life through their actions, their words, their deeds, their attitudes, the things they do? We got to be careful. So the intent is to get you to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Now, the book of Revelation kind of wraps it all up from the beginning to this time. And he tells you who you are. And we as his people, as God's chosen, will be raptured out. We will look at that. And when we're raptured out of this world, we are taken out. We are removed from this world where he will cast his uh, a wrath up on. God's not going to cast his wrath up on his people, his loved ones. So John is his mind, even in this, this the very first part of the first chapter of Revelation, uh, God is showing us what he can do to an individual. And it is his word. And he has told us that for almost 2,000, around 2,000 years ago. He's been talking to us through the prophets, the minor prophets and the revelation, uh, the minor prophets and the major prophets all the way back to over 700 years before Christ even came here. We must learn to listen to the message. And Satan keeps us so busy that he cannot grab, get us and grab our attention because we have so many things going on. We won't take the time to talk about Christ. Boy, my time is going on and I haven't even scratched the surface here. So, all right, we will pick up where we left off. So when we look at these, these churches that Christ uh, spoke to John about, these areas are over in Turkey. Now, let's think about something. What happened here recently over in Turkey? Don't forget the that. earthquake. And how many people have the died? The earthquake. Yes, and how many people have died over there? So far, 24,000. You know, uh, those who have the Spirit of the Lord in them, we might need to look closely at this event because we have been talking for months about being in this time of the last days. Over in Turkey, the seven churches, this is where the seven churches are, as you find Pergamus, Thyatira, Sardis, Sin uh, 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 um, Smyrna, Philadelphia, Ephesus, Laodicea. Isn't it uh, interesting? that the churches that God is speaking about in Revelations through John over 2,000 years ago, uh, about, and I'm speaking to you about the seven dispensations of time. Now, this was not part of my study. It's just interesting. I had this map up, but I had this map up in my studies before the earthquake happened. But now that I have my map up and I'm looking at my study and you tell me that the earthquake is over there in Turkey, is God trying to tell us something yet? Does it mean anything to you? Does it wake you up and realize God is still trying to get to our thoughts? Wow. But that's interesting. We must be careful when we talk about, uh, God's people, God's time. Revelations 1 1 said, Revelation of Jesus Christ. Some people said this is a revelation of John. If you hear that, don't use it. Because Rev John did not have no revelation about anything. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ through John to us which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Interesting. When we look at the word of God, this was written, uh, written around 96 AD after the death of Christ. He used the term shortly come to pass. When we look at that, we have to look at the image of God. We have to look at the characteristics of God. We got to look at the attitude of God. He said, come shortly, but yet in 2023, he has not come yet. 
What does that tell you about God? Yeah, it, when you think of it, He's not a God that rushes. Mm. Time in our manner is not the same as the time when God speaks. We know that a day is of a thousand years. And he said, uh, he said, said show to his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now, if God comes tomorrow, he called two, over 2,000 years shortly. <laughs> so when we read, remember, when you pray, remember, God is not in no hurry. It looks like the rapture could come very quickly. I had a man say, and he was a uh, dean at a school. He told me he couldn't say certain things because being the dean at the school, he has all types of religion, religious people, religions uh, uh, that are uh, enrolled in that school. And he can't cleave to just one view. Okay, that's good. That's on you. The other statement said was that they have been saying for hundreds of years that time is getting close. That's true. Me too. I said it. But I studied. And when you study prophecy and there is a map, a guideline, a calendar, so to speak, which I'll go over that with you that allows you to see in history according to the events that has occurred, that the world time, real time world events that has happened has fallen true to what God has already shown us that will happen. And we are right now, and I'm speaking of the, the image that Daniel, God gave the understanding of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, that when he spoke to Nebuchadnezzar, those were different parts of the head, the, the chest, all of that. I didn't know that until the last few years to realize that God actually was trying to tell us something. And we're down at the feet of that statue, which means it is getting close to God ending the time of man where the end of the church age is about to come amen amen you know the time is close here and it's almost time for us to get up out of here but it's just so interesting how satan has been persistent in his interfering when it comes to us in this book of revelation I don't know who it is that he's trying to prevent the word to get to Satan, but I'm determined not to be let it to be anyone that's in our fellowship. Um, we will get this done. Um, even if I need to make my uh, presentation all the way through to the book, to the seven bowls, if I have to take and print this out every week to get it to people so you have it in your hand. You can follow me, except for the parts where I'm really using this as an outline, but you can see this and be able to study for yourself. Satan is determined to block what we are doing. I am determined to put a stop to him that I can do God's work. So I'm going to leave that alone at the moment. Uh, so let me take this off the, the screen. You. Um, <laughs> But I'm going to go about you. Be prayerful that we be able to fight Satan. I'm gonna, we're going to have to put an end to him in his medicine way. Uh, interesting. The part here, chapter 14 of what's on my screen is in my background. Let not your hearts be troubled. Be, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way, you know. 
So we thank God for what he's doing. Uh, if, we, if we have to inch through this, we're going to do it because I am determined to make sure we understand clearly what it is that God wants us to know and do. Uh, so pray for me that I will be able to find ways to prevent Satan from getting up in our business and that his word can go out. Please read ahead. Read uh, Revelation chapter 1. Look at the seven churches. Uh, after you get through the seven churches, we will go in understanding also about the seven candlesticks, the seven stars, the seven churches, what we were talking about. Make sure you have that in your mind. Come back to us on Tuesday after we have our prayer and our business meeting. And let's go ahead and look at and look closely at what God is saying to us that we can learn. Some of these things will be very useful for us in living our daily lives because God will reveal unto you things that you would not normally see with normal eyes. Trust in the Lord and do good. Any questions at this time?